Alrighty. I wanted to, before we pray first, just share a little something with you guys that can work into our prayer. I want to share it because um, I haven't heard a lot of news being reported on Israel lately, but um, last night there was five people killed. Um, so I'm just going to read a little bit about that and, and then we'll integrate that into our prayer for our class. Uh, so two of the people were Ukrainian immigrants. So they were given refuge in Israel from the war that's going on there. And then they come and they were caught in the crossfire of the terror in Israel and they perished. So two of the five were Ukrainian um, immigrants. And then, and you should know that many of the Ukrainians are Jewish, a uh, high, high percentage. Um, there was a police officer named, um, <clears throat> sorry if I get a little emotional, but I think it's important to share, Amir Khoury, he was a Christian, Arab, and um, he arrived at, at the scene of the attack on motorcycle, encountered the terrorists um, after he shot at passersby and he had killed the four people. Corey fired at the terrorists and died in an ensuing shootout. Um, the other two, and let me see if I can find his picture. This is him. Um, so we should keep him in prayer. So he was a Christian. He's one of our brothers. So that's very sad. You can get online and read more about their lives. This was... Um, this is another of the victims, and his name was Rabbi Abishai Yehezkel, and he was a, a father of five, and he um, basically saw what was happening and put his, uh, he was walking his infant young son in a stroller. And he put himself in the line of fire, and that was how he died. He was only 29 years old. I'm sorry, so may, this may not be the father of five. Um, so 29 years old, but he stepped in front of his son so that he wouldn't die. Um, the officer I was speaking of, his, he was only 32. Um, and then, yeah, this was the, the other... The other guy, gentleman, uh, you can't see him very well, but this is him, and he's the father of five here, and his name was Yaakov Shalom, so, um, and I may be, I'm not 100% sure about the, the Ukrainians um, being refugees from this incident, but I, you know, so forgive me if that was incorrect information, but, um, so anyway, I wanted to integrate prayers for them to begin with. It's important that we stay up with what's happening in Israel. It's about to, we're about to start the the Muslim holiday of holiday week of Ramadan. Ramadan usually falls out near to Passover, which is coming up. Ramadan is often a time where terrorist activities shoots up by more than 50 percent so this being a very interesting year with the administration that they have and that we have uh, we can only pray that it won't be extra bad this year um so i just wanted to bring that out because it's important for us to pray for israel and especially praying for those families and the kids that no longer have their parents yes Aaron? Yeah, I can give you the papers so you can take a look. Um, if you want to pass them around. Is, there, is Russia training data to go into Israel now? No. No, they won't do that. Yeah, okay. okay. I was going to say, no. it, was just, it was just like miscellaneous. 
This is terrorist activity. Oh, terrorist Palestinians activity in, okay. in in the land. Okay, I was yeah. just like wondering if the war is spreading over the area. No, like no, that's a good okay. question. But no, it had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's always happening really there. Yeah, okay. It doesn't get reported, but just the fact there was something of not too long ago within the past month too. It's been really quiet for a while. It was very quiet during Trump's administration, but we can only assume because the problem is is that our ambassador to Israel is basically insulting Israel. It makes me furious. I'll probably start shaking if I talk about it, think about it too much. But he's basically blaming the Jews for these deaths because they're building in their homeland, which is ludicrous to me. So that's who we have as our ambassador to Israel. And that would be appointed by Biden. Yes. Yeah. So um, that's my piece on that. But we'll pray for our class now. So. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here together today. I thank you for the way things work out. I trust you in all the placements that you do in our lives. I'm uh, humbled and grateful to be here today and to be able to um, not be traveling, really, and, and to, to teach about Pesach, about Passover, and do so through the Hebrew language. I thank you for these children and young people and for these women who are safeguarding them and training them up. I just pray a blessing over our time. I pray a blessing over Israel, healing for the entire nation who are mourning, um, healing for the families, and we mourn right, right along with them. Help us to educate ourselves and be able to talk about these things since they aren't being really talked about as much as they should. I pray for America and for protection because we know that when we go against Israel, we uh, have put a bullseye on our backs. So please protect those of us who stand with Israel and uh, help these uh, young people to learn how important it is to, to do so. And I ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to, uh, because of my kids getting... <laughs> Bless you. Getting off right at three. I wanted to go over a little bit, but we have another week um, before Passover, so I'm just gonna try and go go fast. Let's do our blessing for learning Hebrew that we should do. So if you have that sheet, go ahead and take it out. Our bracha. Yeah, you can have a. Yeah, you didn't bring any of your stuff, did you? You can just follow along, okay, buddy? All right, so in English, blessed is the one who has taught my hand to scribe the letters. And in Hebrew, Baruch, Hamila Med, Et Yadi, Lesaper, Et Haotiot. Okay, I think we're going to skip my tofu because I really want to get to some stuff today. Um, so I'm going to give you the worksheet I started. It's Passover soon, so we're going to learn Hebrew and learn about Passover that way. Whatever we don't finish today, we can work on next time or you can work on as homework. Um, I'll give you a few. Yeah. And um, I have more. This is just part one. So I brought Miss Elizabeth these books. These are called Tagadas. When you go to a Seder, typically everyone would have a little book at their place. The book is, well, Haggadah, it's, it's the story. So what we do is we're telling the story of the Exodus from Egypt through this meal and the deliverance of the Lord through this meal. There's all kinds of songs and traditions, um, but it's basically a guide that will lead us through the Seder. So I thought, and there's obviously a lot of Hebrew in here. So this one's more of a song book, that's neat. Um, they're all different. There's like more maybe types of Haggadot of these books then there are maybe translations of the bible they often have beautiful art in them 
They're very, they're very awesome. They're all unique, coming from all different, all different regions, all different uh, sects of Judaism and other um, people, because really this is a feast to invite everyone of all people to come out of Egypt. Egypt represents, in Hebrew, actually Mitzrayim. Egypt means a place of bondage, pressing a narrow place. And we know that in Egypt, the Israelites were um, crushed by Paro and enslaved, and he just wouldn't let them go. Paro can represent, or Pharaoh can represent any type of sin or idolatry in our life, anything that takes us away from where we need to go, which is out of Egypt to Mount Sinai to receive God's laws, which are the instructions and like kind of path for our life. So the learning is going to be going through basically elements of the Seder and learning the Haggadah. And so let's do that. So um, and we'll do it together. So you'll need a pencil. I'm going to fill mine in too as we go. A lot of practice writing. And if we please uh, ask me questions. This will be a good more couple of classes to where you can we can discuss more a little bit. Okay. So the first part is from Leviticus or Vayikra 23 and verse 4 it says these are the Lord's appointed feasts the sacred assemblies you are to proclaim at their appointed times and then I have a little question here so what so what do you notice about that verse so the question is these feasts are known as a Jewish holidays b interesting things to do or c the Lord's appointed feasts so what would be the correct answer to that question? Are these just Jewish holidays? Is that the answer? Are they like just cool, interesting things we should we could do from time to time? What, what's my answer, guys? The answer is C, and it says it right there in the text, the Lord's appointed feast. So you could circle your C. Okay, and the first day of the first month, that is the Rosh Chodesh. I don't know if you remember Rosh meaning head. It has to do with the letter Resh. Um, Chodesh being month. Or celebration of the biblical new year begins this Saturday evening at sundown on April 2nd. Um, from that day, we have 14 days to prepare for God's feast. So there is a new year, which we celebrate on December 31st. There's a new year in in the Bible, um, and then in also traditional Judaism for the trees, when we celebrate a new year of planting, there's what is called uh, Rosh Hashanah, or it's called the Feast of Trumpets. A lot of times people will celebrate that as a new year. That's like the civil calendar new year. God said, this is really the new year. It says, this is the first of months for you. This is to be the beginning of your year. So really, coming this Saturday, we should say Happy New Year to each other because that's the beginning of God's calendar. It's a very, 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 very special and important day. So if you think about it on Saturday night, step outside, see if you can see the sliver of the new moon. And if you happen to have a shofar or any kind of ram's horn or trumpet, blow it. Say a prayer. Thank God for starting over again. Um, and then why don't one of you who likes to or would be willing to read that next section of text, please read Leviticus 23, 5 through 8, nice and loudly for us, please, anybody. And if you don't want to, I will, but I thought I'd offer. Anybody want to? No? Do you want to, Leah? If you can do it loud and you want to do it? Okay. Leviticus 23. <clears throat> the Passover to the Lord begins at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. On the 15th day of the same month begins the Feast of Unleavened Bread to the Lord. For seven days you must eat unleavened bread. That word is matzah in Hebrew. In the first, on the first day you are to hold a sacred assembly. You are not to do any regular work. So in other words, the first and the last days of Passover are a are rest days. They're Sabbaths. For seven days, you are to present an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the seventh day, 
there shall be a sacred assembly. You must not do any regular work. So the first word we're going to look at is Pesach. Can you say Pesach with me? Good. So Pesach, and I'll write it up here. Pesach is a Hebrew term for the feast of the Lord known as Passover. So Pesach consists of which three Hebrew letters? As I write them up here, you're going to tell me, and then you're going to write them here in English. In other words, let's, well, I'll clarify as we go on. So let's take a look first. The first letter of Pesach is which letter? This is Kimo. Do you remember? It's okay. Don't be shy. You can guess any time, but just try and, yeah. Do any, does anybody remember which letter this is? And if you want to look in your Aleph Bet page, you can find it on there. Sorry, I should have added that. That's actually very helpful. You know it? All right, what is it? Pe. Pe. So on our sheet, on your line, you're going to write it out like this. Pe. Okay? Do you guys not have your Aleph Bet like, key with all the Aleph Bet on it? Because if not, I can give you one, an extra for today. Do you have them or not? Yeah. Yeah. Pull it out yeah. so you can participate because there's going to be a lot of letter identification today, okay? And writing practice. All right, so we have Te. All right, does anybody remember uh, what the name first of this vowel is? Pet. It's a vowel. You don't know your vowels yet. So you can, when we do the vowels, you don't have to guess. Anybody remember the, the name of this vowel? Sigo. Good. Goal. You don't need to write that on your page unless you want to underneath the line. You could if you wanted, that'd be cool. The goal. Um and so pe with the sego, that's where we get our f sound, right? So this is why we go p e, right? Alright, and then we have our next Hebrew letter. Which letter is this? Let, let them try, okay? Go ahead and call it out when you got it. And let me know if you do need another sheet. Good. Okay, so this is Sana, and I want you to write that out. Sana. Right? Okay. Does anybody remember which uh, <clears throat> vowel this one is? The name of it. Tach. Good. Tach. Uh, so, so far we have pe. And so, summit with patak, what sound would it make? We have. Samek alone makes what sound? Good. And then Samek with Patak would be what? Sa. Good. This is what we have so far. And then our third Hebrew letter. Which one is this? Chet. Good. So this is Chet. So we're going to write it here like that. Do you understand what I want you to do on your worksheet? Okay. Okay, and what sound does uh, sorry, um, <laughs> I just gave it away. Chet makes the right? So that's where we get our word, Pesach. Say it again with me. Pesach. Good, Pesach. All right. Okay, and then what I want you to do is practice in your boxes, writing from right to left, the word Pesach with the vowels, if possible, two times. I left space for that. So you put one letter in each box, okay? Go ahead and do that, and I'll kind of write it up. Good job. So I have boxes. So go ahead and practice right now. And then I'll kind of come over and take a look and see how they're looking. And if you'd like to do the vowels, that would be real good. For sure, put your dogish, otherwise, otherwise it would be fesok, which is not a word. Okay, like that, and do it twice. Unless you want to leave one over to do for practice this evening, but definitely want to get done with this packet as much as possible until next.
scraps because we're going to go on with the same thing. Okay, we'll, we'll get something after, okay? Can't help you now. Like in here? Oh, thank you. Cool. I'll give you a piece of bread with peanut butter while we finish that up. It's perfect. Thank you. This is perfect. This is totally fine. What's that? Oh, okay. Yeah, there's one over here too. Thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah. It's like a knife. You done? Okay, everybody was looking good. Why don't you make sure you fill in? Do you got them all? Yeah. All the boxes? Yeah. Okay. Give me just a sec. Uh, you guys, please stop doing that. Okay, our own, please stop doing that. Remember, our own, I wanted to give you another chance today, but if you're going to be naughty, this will be the last chance that you get. Okay. Um, thank Miss Elizabeth, please, for the food, because you aren't starving, but you always are, apparently. Okay, this is good. Yeah, you just fold it in half, and then do it, and try not to grip it. Eat it over the plate. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Okay, let's go on. So we have pants off. We did our writing practice. Okay, so there are only in okay in that passage above the Leviticus twenty three five through eight. This is what we're going to talk about. There are only four biblically commanded mitzvot. Mitzvot would be instructions, which we are able to do in these days in order to honor God on Pesach. Three of them were mentioned in the verse above. What are they? So I'm going to need you guys to think and, and speak up and contribute for this part. If you need to read it again, go ahead. Or if all, you want me to read it again, I can. But I want to write those down. There's three things... In this passage, we can do what one verse? we cannot. What's that? What verse? There's the, right here, the Leviticus 23, 5. Okay. okay, can anyone think of one of them for me? I do. Oop. They're all right there. So, what did he say? He said, let's see. For seven days, you must eat unleavened bread. Okay, can we, are we able to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't we write that down. Eat matzah for seven days. It's right there on the paper. Okay, and then, <coughs> excuse me, bless you. Um... What are the other two? Oh On the first day, you are to hold a sacred, secret, secret assembly. Okay, so that, do you know, what does assemble mean? Gather. Yep, so you can gather with family, with friends, with your community, or a certain purpose, not just to hang out, right? I mean, hanging out is awesome, but you want to have intention with it. So gather together, and then what was the other one? Okay. Yep. On the first, you can work and, you know, do your regular activities while, you know, upholding the other things, such as not eating leavened foods and eating matzah. For the rest of the week, but the first and the last day of the feast, you're supposed to treat as a Sabbath. So you could write rest on the first and the last day. What is the one in there that we cannot do anymore? Sacrifice. Yep. 
And why is that? Because God already died on the cross for us. Jesus was the last sacrifice. That is a good answer, and I know that's commonly known. What about um, the fact that there's nowhere to bring an offering? There's no temple, right? I would go off on the book of Ezekiel and how that's the millennial temple and how there's offerings offered there and what offerings really were, but that would take the rest of our life. <laughs> so the main reason is because there is no temple. All right, so we got Pesach. We've got the commandments of Pesach, and now there's one more. So Exodus 12.8 says, they are to eat meat that night, roasted over fire, not just any meat. We found out back in this account, it was a whole lamb roasted over the fire, not boiled, not cut, nothing like that. It was to be kept whole, um, along with the unleavened bread or matzah and bitter herbs. Okay, so that's another one. This fourth mitzvot or commandment leads us to the tra tradition of the Passover Seder. So Seder is a word which means order. That's because this meal is highly structured and is done in a particular order. Each and every element has depths of meaning and purpose and connection as well to the Messiah Yeshua. So bitter herbs in Hebrew is this word maror. So say maror with me. Maror. Maror. And the maror is one of 15 traditional steps in the Seder that we will look at. But first, let's do our writing practice with maror. So we're going to do the same thing, just with a different word. Let's do that now. Okay, so get out your pencil, or take your pencil out, and let's do our next word. So which um, letter is this? That's right, the little guy walking up the mountain. Which letter is it? It's mem. We're going to write it on our line. Mem. Okay. Write it on the line. I don't know if you remember what I said about this vowel. This is, do you remember his name? It is silent. So she kind of gives it away. This is Shiva. Shiva. And Shiva is silent. And we just want what I said was for now at the beginning of our learning. When you see Shiva, just ignore it. Sounds weird, but that's what I said. Next letter. Which letter is this? Gimel. <laughs> nope. This is Gimel, remember? Noon. Nope. This is noon. You can look at your paper and see if you can find it. Resh? Yep, resh. Huh. Resh. We'll put that on our next line. Resh. And we have a vowel up here. Do we remember what that vowel's name is? Um, Silent. Nope. Good. So polum. And what sound does that one make? Oh. Good. So so far, what do we have? We have one. Go ahead and try and sound it out with me, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh. No. And I wonder why it's ma. It's having it so fast. Okay. Maro. Maro. So far, so far, I mean, 
I have no idea. What is it? I don't know. Oh, one more. Take this mess. Huh? Take yeah. this mess. Okay, letter this. Is that what you think? No. No. I'm busy. I'm asking you to go. I can't go in the men's restroom. Please help you in the restroom. Wow. And then it's the same letter, so what is it? Rish. Okay, so write it again. And so there's no vowel in it, so we just have maror. Maror. It's really spelled out maror. It's really maror. There he is. Okay, so try and just look at Benjamin, cheat off his, but this is, or, or I've got it up here. So then in your boxes you practice writing your mem, sorry, with shiva and your resh with holam and your resh. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do for now. Go ahead and practice that, and I'll come around and look. All right, let me come look at yours. Um, oh. No, you're good. Yeah. You're good. The shapes are perfect. Just do it from right to left, or you get confused later when you when you start reading. Excellent. Those look great. Okay, good. All right then. Let's go on another element and central theme. For in fact, after the original Exodus Passover experience. The Passover always referred to the lamb, which was brought to the holy temple to be slaughtered by the priest or Kohen. This lamb would then be brought back home to be served at a meal somewhat similar to the modern Seder, and that lamb is what was called the Passover. So this is what it says in 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Messiah, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Some translations add the word lamb after Passover, but it's not really there because it wasn't really needed. For those who understood what Paul was saying, Christ embodied that sacrificial lamb. But you notice it just says Messiah, our Passover. But the first two days of the 